The idea behind Beat Factory was to use a simple parameter or user interface object to control a complex action. And I want to demonstrate how this was achieved, or at least my solution to um, the problem, as there's probably many different ways of solving similar issues in Max. Um, so the first object I looked at was the multi-slider object because it's a single thing that um, can put out multiple parameters and that leads to a cleaner appearance and possibly simpler operation. For example, I have you know, multiple parameters on this multi-slider object, but it only uses one patter object to um, manage it. So let's take a look at the output of multi-slider and I'm going to create a little message box just by typing the M key and connect the output of multi-slider to the right inlet here. So it just kind of shows me everything that comes out of it. And you can see immediately that when I move this parameter, it's just outputting a list of floating point numbers that go from 0 to 127. And here's a little trick, actually. I don't think this parameter is on by default, but this continuous data output when mousing, if that's checked, then it, mount, it sends the output as you're moving the parameter instead of on mouse up. And that was kind of critical to actually making this happen. And the output of multi-slider, this list of floating point numbers, goes into this uh, encapsulated uh, object here. And so this unpacks the output into a whole bunch of floats and goes into this filter handler, which I uh, stole, borrowed from uh, a tutorial I found on the Cycling 24 website on how to make guitar processors, which I found very interesting. So I just kind of lifted that and put it into this patch, and that saved me a lot of time. So uh, that was one that was one thing that I needed to solve. The other issue that I needed to solve is I wanted to morph between a whole bunch of parameters simultaneously. And to do that, I, I used a really simple solution uh, with the patter object. So patter has remembered presets. And so I've got this patter storage object down here. And if I send it integers, like this, then it's recalling those presets, seven, eight, nine. These are all presets that are stored. And one neat thing that's built right into Patter is the ability to interpolate between adjacent presets. So this decimal place, if I start going 15 point whatever, then as it approaches preset number 16, it's actually morphing between those two, those two stored presets which is really useful. Um, but that wasn't exactly what I wanted because I had this idea of, I have two presets, an A preset and a B preset, and I want to morph between these. And, and the problem is these aren't adjacent presets. I want to morph between preset number 11 and preset number 55. And that's all these 2D objects are doing is they're just creating a, um, uh, a number, it just, it's like a, the ability to play a preset or a selection of a preset on two axes. So I have this and then that, and then we want to morph between them. So what do we do if we want to morph between preset 10 and preset 29? Uh, it's actually pretty easy to understand. And, and what you need to do is format a message that says, recall preset 10, recall present uh, preset 29, and then an interpolation value between 0 and 1. And that's what this slider is producing here. So we'll grab our message object and take a look at the morph output. And so this is just a floating point number from 0 to 1. And over here we have these two integers. So the two integers are packed together with the floating point number, integer, integer, floating point. And then a recall is prepended on the front. And let's inspect the message that it actually creates. So grab that. We have this and this, and then the interpolation value. So it's a pretty simple message. Recall 18 to 28, and then you know a third of the way in, depending on this morph value. So that's the core concept behind Beat Factory's parameter morphing, and I th think that you probably find this technique useful for some of your projects.